Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome back to the channel, guys. It's your boy Sly Lancey. And for today's video, we're going to be doing a documentary, actually. This is going to be very different compared to other videos I did on this channel. We're actually going to be talking about the Sonic vs. Shadow Passion for a Rose trilogy. This video is basically going to be talking about the things that went into making the trilogy. You know, the little bits and pieces of the story that I worked on, what I kept, what I left out, you know, how why went about dividing the way I did, what I did to make certain characters stand out, or certain, you know, situations stand out, why I wrote the stories a certain way. You know, everything, everything that you guys are wondering or had questions about in this in this uh, trilogy, we're gonna be discussing in this video here. So hope you guys have fun with the video and let's get to it. My journey into Sonic was probably a bit weird. It may be a bit weird for some people, but for me, it was kind of weird. Because, like, I never really got into Sonic like that until I got into my, like, my late middle school years, early high school years. But, like, I knew who Sonic the Hedgehog was because my cousins had Sonic Knuckles 3, and I first found out about that game when I was 8 years old. But then, you know, obviously, through commercials, I saw characters, like, you know, I saw, like, the spin-off games that Sonic had, like, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games, the Sonic All-Star Racing, and then, more ways I found out about Sonic was by watching the anime Sonic X. And then, through watching Sonic X a lot, I found out more about the lore of Sonic and everything else that followed it afterwards. And that's how my journey into Sonic began. I started by drawing a lot of Sonic Amy stuff, and if you look deep into my catalog on DeviantArt, you can see like a lot of Sonic Amy stuff that I drew. Whether it be like mini comics that I did, or just like simple drawings, the two like going on dates together and stuff. It was just like, I, I cared deeply about, you know, that ship a lot. It was in my heart. And one of the artists that I have to give credit to for giving, making me inspired in signing me the way I was is eBay. I don't know if anybody knows eBay out, out there, but just type in e v sign amy and you'll see a ton of sign amy comics that she did over the years she's a great artist and i absolutely love her work another person that got me into sign amy is cheryl doodles she does a lot of sign amy animations on her channel so check her out too definitely it was through those two that i became a huge shipper of sign amy whether you want to believe it or not, my friend Scruffy Berry actually was the one who got me into Shad Amy. I started drawing some Shad Amy drawings, and I started to realize that I actually do have a bit of connection with Shad Amy. So that's where my love for Shad Amy started to grow as well. So because of my love for shipping, and plus through the fact that I wanted to grow my audience, I wanted to make two comics, a Sign Amy comic and a Shad Amy comic. And I made the comics based off the songs that represented how I felt about them the most. So like the song Criminal by Britney Spears represented Shad Amy the most to me. And then As It Was by Harry Styles, for whatever reason, represented Sign Amy the best for me. Though the other song that represented Sign Amy the best to me was Shower by Becky G. I didn't want to make the comic, you know, PG-13 or potentially much more mature than that. So I just stuck with As It Was by Harry Styles. Initially, initially, these were supposed to be two separate comics. They weren't supposed to be involved together whatsoever. So there was supposed to be just the Shad Amy comic and just the Sign Amy comic. And that was going to be that forever. And the only reason why I decided to combine the two together to make it into a full trilogy was because of this artwork I saw by Light the Hedgehog where it was like Dark Sonic and Super Shadow fighting each other and Amy's in the middle trying to stop both of them from fighting each other. And when I saw that artwork, that's when it gave me the idea of, you know what? It would be cool if these two fought over Amy. Even though the concept isn't anything new or original, I just always thought about that idea of like, what if these two just fought each other? And plus, at the time, I was also watching debates online about whether or not who would win in a fight between Dark Sonic or Super Shadow. And the fact that that artwork came up at the time and Amy's in the middle, 
the light bulb just went off just like that and I'm like this would be cool if I could make this into a, a story like this you know and I know I think a lot of people would really like it if I did it like that so that's where the idea of the trilogy came from the first part of the trilogy and what I think a lot of people believe is the best story in the entire trilogy which could be up for debate for anybody out there but yeah so criminal Shad Amy. The story to this comic was actually supposed to be vastly, vastly different from what it was. So, the original idea I had for the story was that it followed the events of Sonic Adventure 2, but it was more like a what if type story. Because the what if is what if Sonic had died during that battle and Shadow was the one who survived instead? This was a story that I had stuck with for a while because I thought it would be cool to like force Amy to like get out of the whole like I love Sonic so much ordeal and force her to finally become her own person. And her grieving Sonic's death could also correlate with Shadow grieving Maria's death and how that would be the catalyst for both of them, you know, coming together and, you know, becoming closer that way. And that was the plan I initially had. However, uh, a couple of my friends actually didn't like this idea at all because they didn't like the fact that Amy's character development relied on death for her to finally grow rather than her learning to grow by itself. So that's the main reason why I nixed that idea afterwards and instead went with the idea of Amy has to help Shadow, you know, clear his name from all the crimes that he apparently committed even though he didn't really commit them. Hence why the title of the comic is Criminal because, as I stated earlier, based off Britney Spears' song, Amy Rose is in love with a criminal. I chose Mephilius for the villain of the story because he's the only one that legitimately made sense in terms of the person committing the crimes that looked exactly like Shadow. Plus, I think it'd be a nice little nod to the story that Sonic 06 had where, Sa where Shadow literally had the best character development he's ever had in a Sonic game. So that was one of the reasons why Mephilius made sense as the villain. My favorite part to that entire process was, I guess, Deciphering the dialogue between Shadow and Amy and just learning how to like get these two to like talk out the situations and get them to like come together as one because like but, but you gotta understand like we're dealing with a, we're dealing with a quote-unquote edge lord and then this like this like pink princess and it's like how do you go about making these two compatible you know have shadow talk about his problems and his issues you know and which I'll talk about later when we get to the characterization part and then have Amy you know be like this like this this womanly figure that Shadow uh, always wanted to have in his life ever since Maria died so that's where you know which I think is a what how a lot of people write their Shadow Amy stories so yeah that was basically how I came up with that concept my least favorite part of that whole process was drawing the comic, the whole art style of the comic. I absolutely hate it now looking back at it because it really, really looks bad. The anatomy is very off. Some of the, some of the, some of the panels actually come off very like cut and paste. So that's why I just, that's why even though I love the story, I hate the art to it. And I really, really go back to watch this comic dub. If I go back to it, I listen to the audio instead of actually like watching the film itself. But I live in the ending to this film I actually think is the best off, ending off, by far of all three. Talent, mainly because it really showcases how sometimes in life there isn't always a happy ending. Sometimes, you know, people really do have sad endings in life. So as bittersweet as the ending to Shad Amy was, I still really, really enjoy it because it leaves that idea of would they ever get back together or is are they truly never meant to be? As it was, San Amy. San Amy's story stayed relatively true to how I wanted it to be, where Sonic and Amy get into this massive fight that ends their friendship, only with a couple of differences to the plot itself. So the differences I wanted to have was that I wanted Super Amy to come in at one point after it was thought to be believed that she died during battle leaving Sonic a hot mess, but again, the idea came off very corny, and my friends even said the same thing, the idea was just super corny in retrospect, so that's the only reason why I chose not to go that route, and instead I just decided, 
let's just have Sonic suffer like this, like, like this internal battle inside himself where he's emotional. Even though he comes off as like he always keeps his emotions in check, he's actually hurting deeply on the inside because he never knew how to manage his emotions. That was where I wanted to get the idea for this whole story. Let's just have Sonic battle himself. Even though Eggman is one of the villains in the story, the true villain in this story is Sonic himself. And also to go into further about where that idea came from, look no further than Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man trilogy. And if you're a die-hard Tobey Maguire Spider-Man fan, you'll definitely notice the song that I put in there, Hold On by Jet. And basically, the concept of that song and why I put it in the dub was because of the fact that I wanted to basically reverse the roles of Sonic and Amy in this dub. Sonic is someone throughout history has always been, you know, like, not wanted to be around Amy. Amy's wanted to be with Sonic. So I decided, let's reverse the roles. Let's have Sonic now finally come to terms with his feelings for Amy, and he actually wants to date Amy now. And Amy being like, I don't know, I'm kind of indifferent towards this. And that's where the song Hold On by Jack came in, because in the movie Spider-Man 2, Peter is battling with his alter egos and like, should it be Peter Parker or should it be Spider-Man? I use the song in this context as a way of saying, should Sonic be himself or try to be more like Amy? Or with Amy, like, should I just be myself or should I be more into Sonic? Because I'm not sure. That's basically where, that's basically where that came from. So as the story progressed, I wanted to have this like idea of, you know, like, what if tensions between Sonic and Amy finally boiled over to the point where both of them didn't want anything to do with the other anymore? And that would push out Sonic's uh, dark, dark side again. You know, not the Metarex, not Eggman, but rather his inability to control his motions and it being Amy. Lo not Amy directly, but indirectly Amy being the one to push out his dark side, which shows how much that Sonic actually cares for Amy. And then the ending would be Amy being the obvious choice to have her break Sonic out of his dark spell. And then the two would finally talk out the differences and finally forgive each other. Which then leads to the most iconic moment in the entire trilogy where both finally become boyfriend and girlfriend and kiss as fireworks are going off in the background and Harry Styles music is playing. So while I enjoy this film and it's easily the most popular of the three and still my most popular video on YouTube, I did have a couple of gripes with it and a couple other people did too actually. The main issue that a lot of people had when I was reading the comments and now that I look back at it, I actually wholeheartedly agree with them, was that I messed up Sonic's characterization in that film, cause in the end, I had Sonic go somewhat evil, and I, I think people didn't like that because they felt that Sonic wouldn't go fully evil like that, he would just lose his temper and go aggressive. And if I had a chance to do it over again, I would have wrote the story so that in the end, Sonic would have been beaten Eggman to near death or to a pulp and the only reason he stops is because Amy stops him from killing Eggman. I definitely would have went that route instead if I had the chance to do it over again. But then again, I think I I think the kiss at the end wouldn't have been as iconic as it was. So again, it's like it's one of those things where it's like, you know, you take some, you give some, you lose some, you know. But I I understood people's problem with it. Another reason, another gripe I heard, this was, this one was mainly from, uh, my inner circle. They felt that having Sonic and Amy date at the end like that, and then having them together in the third trilogy, kind of makes Amy look bad in a way, but I'll definitely get to that later in a sec. I'll get to that later, but I just want to throw that out there. But yeah, aside from those two issues that I have a problem with now that I look back at it, I definitely think that, uh... The, the story could have been done just a little bit better. I could have rewrote the story a bit better. My favorite part of the of writing the dub was easily the, the kiss and just watching Sonic and Amy finally talk everything out and talk everything that they had over the years and just having them grow as friends and then be eventually become partners. And also, low-key, Naksu is just one of the best Sonic ships out there. Just had to throw that out there. And lastly, the title, as it was, 
it was basically because the song as it was by Harry Styles, while it sounds happy and fun, there's actually a dark undertone to it, which I felt was perfect for the Sonic Amy dub. Now we move into the main event. Oh, the main event. The six month long process. Now, trying to make this comic was extraordinarily difficult because one, I would never made a comic or graphic novel this long before. Also, my schedule outside of YouTube is very, very hectic. So like I have to manage my time, figure out how to get this done and get it out for everyone. So that's where the difficulty came in for that. And believe it or not, the most difficult part was actually rendering the film because the story, I, I had no problem writing the story and drawing the comic, I had plenty of time for that. It was just rendering the video. And because like, there's so many little intricate things that go into rendering a video for any of my other fellow YouTubers out there or anybody who's ever tried to make a YouTube video that intricate, it's very, very hectic stuff. A lot of chopping, a lot of editing, a lot of sound bites that you have to get correct. So yeah, that was one, that was probably the hardest part of this whole journey. But it was definitely, definitely worth it. So the story for part three, it literally, I literally just like, I wouldn't, I don't want to say winged it, but I, it was literally just like, it was literally the first draft I just went with. Like, okay. This is how I want to go about it, you know, just make sure the dialogue is somewhat correct, not as corny as last time. You know, make sure characters consistencies are correct, the characterization isn't bad. Just, it was just like learning from the mistakes I made with the first two films and just putting it into the third film. And aside from that, the only other thing I was doing was literally trying to decide how do I make as many funny jokes and innuendos as possible while also trying to keep the dub as PG-13 as possible. There were some obvious jokes in there that I know fans caught on to, like the Sonato kiss, you know, Knuckles hinting at uh, Sonic's lack of drive. <laughs> then, then there was another, there was another innuendo that I don't think people caught on to, which was the fact that Rouge was low-key simping for Amy the entire time. It's very subtle how I put it for Rouge, but if you pay attention to her dialogue and look at some of her body parts when, whenever Amy's around, you can tell that she's actually really low-key attracted to Amy. And the funniest part is that Knuckles knows about it too. <laughs> Another innuendo at Easter Egg that I think most people caught on to, especially on my DeviantArt page, was when Sonic and Shadow kiss Amy. A lot of people caught on to the fact that I got that idea from when uh, Batman and Robin kissed Harley Quinn at the same time. So it, it was pretty obvious. I was actually low key happy that people figured that out as quickly as they did. Yeah, so while part three was by far the most difficult to make, it was also probably the most fun I had making a dub because I, I was just throwing as many jokes in there as I possibly could while also maintaining the seriousness and keeping the love triangle and drama up, upheld. You know, and again, even though if I had a chance to do it over again, I would have definitely changed a lot of the story consistencies. Overall, I'm happy with how the product came out mostly, mostly. The main character of the story, Amy Rose, or as I called her in this dub, Amanda. Now, let's just get the elephant out the room. Yes, I've been calling her Amanda the entire time. Not because that's her real name. I know to everyone who's been asking me that, I know Amy's real name is Amelia. I chose to call her Amanda mainly because this is my personal version of Amy and how I saw fit for her character. Now that we got that disclaimer out the way, let's talk about Amy. Now, Amy, right next to Sonic, is easily my favorite character in the entire trilogy, you know. I, and, but then again, I have a fondness for characters who are hated, overlooked, or underrated in a lot of people's eyes, hence why I'm a huge Waluigi fan and Sly Cooper fan. What most people don't know about Amy in this particular universe is that she's actually a very powerful being, but she doesn't know it yet. And that could be answered at the end of this documentary when I have a special surprise to talk about. Also. Uh, for Amy's characterization in here, I wanted to build her character up to being more independent, you know, so I wanted her, you know, 
to be forced into a situation where she has to learn how to handle things on her own. She can't rely on Sonic, she can't rely on Shadow, she can't rely on anybody but herself, you know. This this hedgehog, you know, she's 20, by the way, she's 21 years old in this dub, she turned 21 duh, during Passion for Rose. For anyone who's asking about her age, she is 21 in this dub. This is basically Amy trying to figure out her life right now and what she can do to get better and progress, you know. So, the fact that, you know, I made her have her own restaurant and how, you know, even though it's slowly steadily rising, there's something that's getting in the way of it. Also, trying to help her learn to move on from her past in case she outgrow her tendencies to be so clingy and obsessive and become more, you know, like passive and not as aggressive. Sonic was by far the trickiest character to figure out, in all honesty. Because, like, Sonic is one of those, like, stoic type characters where he really doesn't express himself a lot, at least from an emotional standpoint. So that whenever he does express himself from an emotional standpoint, it comes off as rather shocking to a lot of people, especially Amy herself. Which, again, goes into that idea of, you know, his emotions. Let's play around with his emotions. Let's make him very emotional and unable to cope or, you know, figure out how to express it without becoming overly excited or overly aggressive about it. Shadow. Ah, uh, the Edge Lord, as everyone calls him for some weird reason. What many people see as edginess, I actually see as a very dark place. Losing Maria was bad enough for him, but also being immortal means he's gonna outlive all his other friends who he's gonna be forced to watch die one day. You know, that, that's where the characterization for Shadow came for me, is that I don't think it's, it's not very blatantly obvious to anybody watching, but Shadow is actually very, very suicidal in this, in this entire trilogy. And he felt that having Amy around was the only way to help him, you know, relax himself and not go off the deep end like that. So I wanted to play around with that aspect of it and have Shadow, you know, try to learn how to, you know, he can't use people that way and how he has to learn how to, you know, get through these things himself, you know, learn how to like process it, grieve it, you know, you know, learn to just not get over it, but learn to just, you know, work through it every single day. That where that was what I wanted to get through with Shadow, you know. And and people people are very quick to label him as edgy and I did keep that edginess to him. But it wasn't like I cut my own wrist for fun edgy, but more just like I'm hurting deeply. I need this female presence in my life edgy. So, yeah, that was basically where the characterization for Shadow came from when I was trying to write him in this trilogy. The other characters that you see in the dub are there to like help, you know, the main three get through their emotions, get through their problems, and just help them, you know. Rouge is being this big sister to Amy that she really needs because given that Amy literally has no other family to talk to and even though Amy has cream having an older figure like Rouge who's been through more situations because she's older was definitely helpful for Amy then you have you know then obviously you have Knuckles, Tails, Cream you know everybody's out here trying to help help all three of them get through their progressions and heck, even though he's the main villain of part 3, Eggman still tried to help Amy in a way too, so... So, final part of the video, we'll talk about my favorite and least favorite parts of the video. So, my favorite part of the trilogy, favorite parts I should say, is easily the fight scene between Dark Sonic and Super Shadow and just watching them go back and forth at it. And for anyone out there who's wondering, Shadow actually did technically win the fight between the two of them, just slightly. The reason being, as Tails put it, you know, Shadow's power was just enough to contain Sonic's power. Just, just enough. Plus, again, this goes back into the whole emotion-based thing. Shadow was more capable of managing his emotions while Sonic was still in his, like, emotional state and couldn't, like, focus good enough to, like, win the fight. That was the main reason why Shadow won the fight between the two of them. 
Another part of the dub which I also thoroughly enjoyed too was definitely when Sonic and Shadow both used their forms to break Amy free from the Chaos Orb. And it was basically the idea that I enjoyed of having Sonic and Shadow basically become like the yin and yang in a way, where they both look through each other's history with Amy and with both of them using their emotions to focus in and destroy the Chaos Orb. With Sonic getting angry and fearful of the idea of losing Amy forever and Shadow being willing to use his limiters the same way he used them in Sonic Adventure 2 to save the world. Those two scenes were by far my favorite in the entire dub because it really showcased what Sonic, Shadow, and even Amy are very, very capable of. Now, for my least favorite part of the film, I would have to say I definitely did not like how I rushed certain things in the film. The thing I felt like I rushed more than anything else was the scene where Eggman forces Amy to talk about why she wanted Sonic and Shadow to hang out together. The fight scenes definitely rushed. I did, I, there should have been a longer fight scene in that particular moment. Plus, now that I think about it, I don't even think it was just uh, that particular fight scene. I think all the fight scenes, I could have added a longer fight sequence to them if I truly had more time. And yeah, I think that was one of the least favorite things about this stuff. That was the main issue I had with it. Also, the fact that maybe I should have just had Amy single from the get-go and then just make a choice at the end. Which, by the way, we now get to the very end of the video in which we talk about which ending is the canon ending. For those of you that have been wondering what my particular canon ending is, it's it's the Rose ending. It's definitely the Rose ending. Because it's the ending that I feel makes the most sense in terms of the story. And plus, if now it forces Sonic and Shadow to learn from their mistakes, while it also forces Amy to learn how to mature more and grow up more. And plus, for those who don't realize it, it does allow for more to the story to happen for those that want it, per se. I'm not going to say what it would be about, but I'm just going to leave it at that for now. Just keep that in mind. And it is with that, guys, that we are done with the documentary for Sonic vs. Shadow Passion for a Rose. Hope you guys thoroughly enjoyed this documentary. Yeah, I hope this answered all your questions. And if you guys still have any particular questions, put it in the comment section down below. I'll get to them as soon as possible. Again, you know... For those of you that want to know about this secret idea that I have, you know, you know, just again, leave a comment in the comment section down below. And also, I also wanted to talk about Shattuck and Amy Rouge. And I said, I stated sometime last year, I wanted to work on a video game for these two. Did you guys still want to see it happen? Or would you guys rather a comic or something? Just let me know. In the, just let me know what you guys would want to see. Because now that I think about it. After I finish with the whole uh, Mario saga that I'm working on, uh, I'm thinking about getting back to Sonic again. So just let me know, guys. Let me know what you guys want to see in the future uh, for any new, for all these new films that I'm working on. So, you know, again, sky's the limit for the potential that we can do with, the, with this channel. So, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all the love and support you guys have been showing lately, you know channel slowly growing every single day and every like share and sub that you guys give helps the channel grow even more so continue to do that please and as always it's your boy sly lancy i love you guys and i'll see you guys next time hey guys one last thing before i sign off i wanted to give a huge shout out to everybody who supported me on this dub uh to the vas who helped me on this dub which is basically all my friends scruffy berry Key to Requiem, Melproof7, and Raffi Donez. Thank you guys so much for all the help. Also, this video was inspired by Kaju Bean stickers, so please check them out too. They have really cool stuff. And also, one very last thank you to all the fans who supported me on this journey and would want to see more stuff like this in the future. Definitely continue to support the channel and I can get more content put out like this for you guys. Thank you, thank you always to everyone who helps me out. I love you guys greatly. Thank you so much always.